Um, so my talk has nothing to do with black holes. Uh, I think it was supposed to be a black hole workshop, but that's not good. <laughs> and uh, there is a lot of uh, activities in South Africa on uh, giant gravitons, for sure, for example. And uh, so my topic is related to that. So it's a kind of local topic. And uh, this is not in collaboration with any of the South African colleagues, but uh, with a former uh, postdoc, uh, Yuki Sato, uh, who is now at the uh, Long Point University in Bangkok. And so, I don't have much to say, but uh, I first show a main result, and this is all what uh, I want to compare. So there are uh, two circles, and you can ignore the dot at the center. And so these two rings, uh, they are two giant gravitons. So this is the initial giant gravitons. Uh, I will explain what the giant gravitons are later. Uh, but then, so here's what I'm showing is the, is the interaction. So you start with two giant gravitons, then you end up with a three. So that's so this is what uh, this this is what I will get in the end. Uh, this is one thing. So this is what I mean by giant graviton interactions. And. This is not giant graviton, what I'm showing, but mathematically, uh, I'm also dealing with uh, another system. So the equation I deal with, it describes a giant graviton interactions, but also it describes uh, something, some different system, which is uh, M2 brains ending on multiple M5 brains. So this is supposed to be, uh, you have uh, three M5 rings. So this uh, giant ring is the, that's where you have M5 rings. And then it's connected by uh, M2 rings. And I can uh, construct uh, as many uh, M5 rings as, uh, as I want, and I can connect them by uh, M2 rings. Yes, yes. And so these are the two things I want to uh, discuss. But so the first part, uh, so this, as I mentioned, it's a study of uh, interactions of multi graviton states, which is represented by giant gravitons, and both in gravity and uh, conformal field theory. And uh, the, the picture, the animation I, sh I have shown is in the gravity description. And the field theory result has been known for a long time, and I will review it. And that animation was actually an instant constitution of some particular matrix model, actually, which was proposed by Shaheen. Uh, he called it tiny graviton matrix model, and I use it. And I will find that the, uh, there is a precise agreement between gravitational description and conformal field theory description uh, for this uh, giant graphic interactions. And uh, as a technical byproduct, uh, I will also show you how to construct uh, M2 brains connecting multiple M5 brains. And uh, what I'm doing is quite simple. So we have two systems of the so, so, uh, there's a duality, ADS-CFT. Can I ask Yes. Was your goal to test ADS-CFT, or did you have uh, something deeper in mind somehow? Uh, well, uh, so it's, the, the way I think about it, this is a cute observation of ADS-CFT. And in a way, it confirms uh, Shaheen's proposal of uh, this matrix model description of 
uh, ADS 5 plus S5. Uh, I hope there's something deeper. Uh, but at the moment, I, I don't uh, have anything to say. But uh, gravitons are very natural description of gravitons in ADS CST. And so I consider this object a uh, fundamental um, uh, object in quantum gravity. So that, that's why I try to study this thing. Yes, I know, so this talk is not a, as, as ambitious as yours, Russia. It's more like a, some cute observation. So I have a type 2b of ADS5 plus S5, and this, there's this object um, rotating uh, in S5 with angular momentum j. And on the other side, I, I have an equal force by a mills, and uh, the conformal field of theory description of giant gravitons are known to be Shiro polynomials, uh, which uh, students here uh, have been studying uh, quite a lot. And so on, on this side, I have M to N giant graviton interactions. On this side, I have this uh, coordination functions of uh, Shiro polynomials. And then um, to make the problem trustable, I take some limit, which is called PP wave limit. So this angular momentum J is of the order of square root M. And I have to keep this quantity to be large. And if I take this limit, what I, I, I find is that the description of giant gravitons as instantons in, in the uh, type 2 matrix model. And on this side, if you take this limit, then it is known that this correlator looks like exponential minus something. And this S is given by this. So this expression suggests there must be some kind of instant description of this uh, M to N giant graviton process. So that's what I, uh, I will find. Okay, so now, uh, so giant gravitons. Uh, I, I review giant gravitons uh, in, in a few slides. So giant gravitons, they are multi graviton states. Uh, with angular momentum j, and it's best described by these three planes. And they come in two varieties. One is the three sphere in S5 of ADS5 plus S5, and the other one is the uh, three sphere in ADS5, and both of them are rotating in the uh, uh, S5. And this is arguably the most natural description of gravitons in ADS5 plus S5 in the sense that, so this is a sure polynomial that forms the orthogonal basis of multi graviton state. So that's why I consider it the most natural description. And as I mentioned many times, actually, the sort of dual of this object is a sure polynomial in conformal field theories. And the original, the way the giant gravitons was discovered uh, is the following. So it's known as a Myers effect. So it's a blue dot. They are supposed to be gravitons uh, with angular momentum J as a whole. And it's immersed in a uniform five form flux. Then there is a well known Myers effect which kind of pops up uh, these uh, gravitons into an, a higher dimensional object, which is a DC brains in this case. And so because it's a bunch of gravitons, and one graviton corresponds to some operator, like this trace Z to the J, and because there's a collection of them, it's a multi-trace operator. And there's a nice way to 
reorganize this multi trace operator, which is the is a sugar polynomial. Uh, I don't explain too, too much details of this, but it's a multi trace operator of particular kind, which gives you an orthogonal basis. And uh, as an object in ADS5 process 5 space, for example, the sphere giant, uh, which corresponds to this blue dot in this. Uh, this is supposed to be five sphere, and the point in this uh, figure is a three sphere. And it's rotating uh, in the direction psi uh, in this coordinate system. And in the supaya middle theory, this corresponds to one of the uh, complex scalar z uh, of this form. And there's another giant, but uh, it's, it's not the main topic today, so let me skip it. So first, um, what is known for the giant Jacobson interactions in conformal field theory. And so you have sugar polynomials. Uh, I mentioned many times, so let me skip. So then, what is known is, so you consider uh, correlation functions of this operator and people know that, that people know the exact answer for the correlation functions, any correlation functions of this type, uh, this operator and it's known to be three level exact, so there's no uh, top coupling corrections and for example, here I, I, I am showing a 1 to n a correlator. Uh, so you have one giant, and then it will become uh, n giant in the end. And the outside, outside symbol, as it looks like this. And when you take the peak wave limit, then this expression becomes exponential. So, I want to uh, reproduce this as an instant of action uh, from some discrete gravity description. And that description is the uh, Shaheen's uh, matrix model. And uh, for uh, general M to N correlators, the answer is known again, and if you take the deep field limit, uh, you have again very simple form. Okay, so so this is the, what is known uh, in uh, conformal field theory. So you're only looking for it between shores in the same half of the S sector. Yes. It's all the same set. Yes, and in fact, I, I focus on the anti symmetric one. Okay, Yes, yes. Uh, determinants of determinants. Okay, so this is all BPS. Yeah, all BPS, half BPS, and no correction uh, from uh, coupling. So now I move on to the gravity description. And uh, so the type 2B PP wave matrix model, that's the tiny gravity matrix model of Shaheen. And uh, so there, there is a, a there is a description of PPA uh, uh, string theory on PPA background, which is the uh, MN, a very Einstein of the set and the stars, which is a two-dimensional free massive theory. So it's a, a two-dimensional signal model and very simple, simple signal model, which actually describes that that's the gravity description of this testing theory of the wave background. But there is an alternative a description proposed by Shaheen, um, which is not a two-dimensional theory, but it's a quantum mechanics uh, matrix model. Uh, so that's the one I use. And so this tiny gravity matrix model is the low energy effective theory of a D3 brain on the PPA factor. 
and it has this form, it has kinetic term, and it has this uh, mass term, characteristic of the PP background, and then you have this commutator thing, uh, which comes from the uh, pi form uh, in the type 2B string field. Uh, so because it's a 10 dimensional string theory, and it's in the light form description, and so you have eight coordinates, x, i. And uh, there is this commutator thing, and uh, so this is a 4D bracket, and which is a quantization of a num bracket. And I, I will work on this uh, classical limit of this theory in, in the sense of this uh, number of And uh, there is, so, the, so what I'm going to do is to find some configuration of matrix which represents the n to n giant character interactions. So I want to solve the equations of motion of this system. And uh, so the equation of motion uh, is uh, second order differential equation, but uh, there is a, a DPS sector. So that there's a special configuration for which uh, you have first order differential equation. So we have actually DPS like equation for this uh, matrix model. And so this is the equation I saw. And first, um, in the static configuration, you get a cluster of fuzzy three spheres. So, like, so this xi, uh, you have a collection of gamma matrices, and in this case, this one to k corresponds to uh, non-interacting k giant gravitons, and each gamma matrix describes a giant gravitons. And it's, it's a fuzzy sphere. And because of this PPS property, the, the, the action of any solution to this PPS equation uh, becomes very simple. So it only gets contribution from the boundary that is uh, infinite past and the future, uh, infinite future. So, that means once I know the initial condition in the past and the future, then I know what exactly this uh, instant of action is. And if I have n initial uh, three spheres and n final three spheres, so that is n giants and n giants, then I get uh, this action, regardless of the details of the solution itself. So here I have achieved one thing. So this is uh, precisely the producing the result of conformal field theory uh, in the big wave limit. So I'm on the right track. So the instant one actually describes uh, the big wave limit of the correlator. So now I can do more to play with this uh, uh, solution, DPS solutions. Uh, so as I mentioned, I, I work in the classical limit in the sense of this uh, uh, four leaf bracket is replaced by non bracket. And then after change of variables, the DPS equation becomes this. So z is like x, and you have we have a uh, four of z, and uh, so this sigma one, sigma two, sigma three will be the world volume coordinate of uh, uh, three sphere, and s uh, corresponds to the time, uh, which is related to the original time by this relation. So, so the key to find solution is to notice that uh, this equation 
you can transform this equation to um, a Poisson equation. So S is the time uh, but uh, so once you transform this equation to this Poisson equation, time becomes the electrostatic potential. And uh, we have this four coordinates, Z1 to Z4, and this is the Laplacian of uh, these four coordinates. So once we map uh, this DPS equation to this um, Poisson equation, then we can find many different solutions. And for example, uh, because uh, it's a Poisson equation in four dimensions, and so you apparently have a Coulomb potential as a solution. So the Coulomb potential goes like one over distance squared, and this is uh, what it's written here is the Coulomb potential. And the correspondence between this and the giant gravitons is the following. Uh, so S uh, infinity corresponds to T minus infinity. It's the infinite past. And so it, it is the initial giant. So the charge uh, at S infinity is the radius of initial giant. And in the infinite future, S becomes zero. And when S becomes zero, uh, Z is infinity. So asymptotic infinity, the charge at, at asymptotic infinity corresponds to the radius of the finite giant gravitons. So in cartoon, here's how it looks like. Uh, so we saw this electrostatic problem uh, in a multi seed uh, space. So we have N uh, of Euclidean four dimensional space. And uh, so it's a general, higher dimensional generalization of uh, Riemann surface. And so instead of branch cut, we have a three-dimensional ball. And so this is called Riemann space. Uh, and so the correspondence, correspondence to a uh, giant gravity is the following. So this green one, a green dot, corresponds to the charge I put uh, on this space. So each charge corresponds to the initial giant gravitons. So if I have m initial giant gravitons, I put m charges. And then uh, the final giant corresponds to the asymptotic uh, infinity, and so I need n asymptotic infinities. So I have to prepare n uh, Euclidean four dimensional space. So what I have to do is just to solve this system. So putting a charge in this multi-sheeted space, and I, I have to find the electrostatic potential in this system. Yes. The jump from so the normal Riemann surfaces? Yes. The branches are there because of some multivaluedness or some function. Yes. yes. Uh, is there some analogy here that what's multivalued? Yes. So um, yeah, it's it's yes, it is, no, it is very much the same. Uh, so, oh, you will yeah, yes, uh, okay. So you start from here, and you come here, then you go to the next. And uh, it's like it's but that's crossing the ball. So you're crossing outside. You have these three balls. Yes. So you're crossing out of the ball. Yes. And then entering it again. Yes. Yes. Your function is changed. Yes. 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 And uh, so there's a convenient coordinate system to describe this multi seated space. And uh, you don't have to pay attention to uh, details, but there's a coordinate theta 
uh, which is important, which, uh, which specifies on which seat you are in. So in this range of theta, you are on the first sheet, and on, on this, in this range of theta, you are in the second sheet. So that's how you get multiplied the sheet. And then the way you get uh, the electric potential is kind of nice. So you start from Coulomb potential, which is 1 over R squared. So this corresponds to uh, locating uh, charges at the same location in every single uh, Riemann sheet. And then you can use a trick. So you, this, so you express this as a contour integral, and then you deform the contour. So if you take this contour, you get this uh, 1 over square, but uh, in the integral, you find other poles. So I deform it. So I start from here, that's the Coulomb potential, and I deform it. So then I can uh, encircle these uh, poles. And so this, uh, there's a pair, uh, there are pairs of uh, poles uh, uh, in the upper and lower uh, half planes. And so this, each pair, so for example, this pair corresponds to the charge at uh, the potential in the first sheet, and this corresponds to the uh, electric static potential in the second sheet, etc. So this Coulomb potential is a sum of all these uh, non-trivial functions. And you can work it out, and this is the answer. So this is when you put a single charge uh, in this Riemann space, and then this is the potential uh, in the nth uh, sheet of the Riemann space. And then once you get this, then it's a uh, so the uh, linear combination of this gives you the m to n giant gravitational interactions. Uh, you have l charges labeled by l. And then, so you have, and you consider this on the nth sheet of the Riemann space. A quick uh, minute yes. second. The white hole. Yes. How should we call it there? Is that theta zero? Uh, the white hole does not appear in this formula. Uh, so I start with this white hole. Okay. But then I I uh, deform the contour, okay, so and so what you see is all these points. And uh, what's theta zero? Hmm? What's theta zero? Theta zero, uh, theta zero. Uh, I think theta zero corresponds to the charge on the first sheet. Oh. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. And then, yeah, that's how I characterize it. Yes. Yes.
and uh, here's one, one, two, two. It goes very fast. And sorry, yes. And uh, I can do whatever two to four. Yes, it's also too fast. Two to four. Okay, so I, I can construct any of this. And uh, uh, that, that, okay, so this was the end of uh, giant gravitons. So, so yes, should I think of these as uh, three word functions? Uh, like we have so three M, three M plus one, M, M. yes, one to two is a three point function, yes. Yeah. Oh, but so you have M to so it's a Z and a two Z bars, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Like so, M to N, you have. So you have a two to four. Right? Yes. So then you have three point function. Or six point it's point. six point one. But M to four the same point. Yes. Ah, so yeah. So it has to be like, like a multi trace state that's just a product of yes, yes. many shores. Yes. So it's still a three point function. Ah, uh, so yes, because uh, yes, I I I, I agree. <laughs> In a way, it's two point uh, always. Oh, two point because it's yes, the two are also the same. Yes, point. yes, yes, yes. So it's kind of yes. limits of higher point. Right. Function. So I, I don't. Right. So it, this this solution does not carry any information about the, the position position mm -hmm. that in the conformal field theory. Yes. 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 Uh, I, uh, no, I doubt it. <laughs> I don't think I can. Uh, well, in principle, we, we can try this, but uh, not as simple as this. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing quite okay in time. Yes, 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 I can finish very early. <laughs> And the equation I had, the BPS equation, uh, which is actually known in a different context, and so it's called the bus Harvey equation. So which, are, which was proposed to describe uh, M2 brains ending on M5 brains. So I can apply a similar technique to find uh, these uh, brain configurations. But the point is that um, the boundary condition uh, to solve the equation is very different from the giant graviton case. So for this M2 brain ending on M5, the boundary condition is this. So near each M5 brain, the, this Z has to behave like this. So this is the boundary condition I have to enforce. But the problem is again just solving an electrostatic problem. And uh, so for example, I can find a uh, final solution. Uh, two M2 brains, that's the two M5 brains connected by uh, infinite number of M2 brains expanded into a squash speed. And so the electrostatic potential uh, I need to consider in this case, it turns out that it's a constant electrostatic potential. So you don't have any charges, just a constant uh, electrostatic potential. But I have to solve this constant elect electrostatic problem uh, in a uh, Riemann space. So the number of sheets corresponds to the M5 brains uh, on which M2 brains are ending. So it's a constant potential, and it sounds like a trivia, but uh, if I use this trick, uh, it becomes very non trivial. So you start from constant, and you uh, express it in the contour of the part. And then you again do the contour deformation, and then you get a contribution from different poles. And again, so this each pair of poles gives you the electric potential in 
one sheet of the Riemann space. So it's a straightforward exercise, and I work it out. And this is a solution. So you have SK. SK corresponds to the location of N5 frame, and I have N of them. So K runs from 0 to N minus 1. Uh, and uh, for example, if I have a three M5 brains, the solution, uh, if I plot the solution, it looks like this. So it's a M2 brain junction uh, ending on uh, three M5 brains. And so this is general enough that I can construct a uh, uh, Solution with uh, any number of n five points. Okay, so good. I finished the guy. So, and for the genetic interactions, um, uh, maybe it's just an interesting observation, and uh, may, there may not be much more than that. But uh, for this n five point thing. Uh, so that bus Harvey equation or BBS equation is actually a uh, equation of motion of the Baga lambda to the star form theory. And in the case of single M5 frame, people actually worked out it's a BLG theory and find that uh, there is a uh, people constructed uh, a variant to compound zero conformant with the theory in six dimensions. But when you have multiple M5 brains, uh, it's a challenging issue. But having this simple solution, uh, I think there's a good chance to make progress in the construction of uh, non abelian 2, 2,0 conformal field theory, uh, building from uh, BLG theory. And also, uh, it's very un uh, off the topic, but uh, this, in one of Cleveland's paper on the SYK like tensor model, he kind of suggested that uh, maybe there's a great description of this tensor model. And because of the n to the cube scaling of these tensor models, uh, it's kind of natural to associate this to uh, the theory of M5 brains, which has M to the cube behavior. And he suggested because it's tensor, and so the three M2 brain junction ending on M5 might be, they, might be the construction of this SYK like tensor model. And well, at least I have some classical solution of this uh, three junction uh, uh, M2 brain ending on M5. And so there might be some relation. Yeah, I see. Yes. 
yeah, maybe yes, I, I can find one more that we just to this. Uh, okay. So the, the simulations you made, they're just by solving the data class equation? Well, so I have an analytic solution and I just plot it. As a solution? Yes. So, yes. Uh, yes. And you can do it for any? Yes. Any choice of any? Yeah. yeah. So basically you reduce it to a classical problem of charge? Yes. 